Now today we are going to discuss some of the most important concepts of financial management. Now before you start with the uh, whole uh, syllabus of financial management, you must consider all these aspects and then you can comprehensively prepare this important subject called financial management. Right, so first of all, you must start with the introductory part of FM so that you get some insight on this subject called financial management. So to start with, the first one is introduction of financial management and emphasizing on objectives, objectives of financial management. Now there have been two main objectives in financial management. There have been two propositions. One is profit maximization theory. Another is wealth maximization theory. Now this has been the changing role of financial managers. Earlier the concern was only on profit maximization. But now the uh, role has been evolved and now the onus is on wealth maximization. So there have been two objectives initially. First one is profit maximization and the latest and the concept that is creating tremendous importance that is wealth maximization. So ye do theories yaad rakhni hai profit maximization and wealth maximization. Remember, profit maximization is a narrow concept. It is dealing with the profits of the company and the concern is to maximize the profits of the firm. Why? Wealth maximization is a broader concept. The main focus is, it aims to improve the value and wealth of the shareholders. So, you have to remember wealth maximization. Aims to improve the value and wealth of shareholders or stockholders. It aims to improve the value and wealth of the shareholders. Another thing is that wealth maximization it considers both the time value perspective and the risk of the business concern. Aapko ek aur cheez dhyan rakhi hai ki jo theory hai wealth maximization ki it considers both time perspective and risk factors of the concern right then wealth maximization it provides efficient allocation of resources because the objective is to maximize the wealth of the stockholders there is you know not just the onus is on the profits of the company but it aims to maximize the wealth of the stockholders so it ensures it ensures efficient allocation of resources so you have to remember that the wealth maximization hai, it aims to improve the value and wealth of shareholders it considers the time value perspective and the risk factors of the concern and it ensures efficient allocation of resources right and it also ensures the economic interest of the society so wealth maximization ka ek aur feature hai it ensures the economic interests of the society so wealth maximization is a broader concept as compared to the earlier perspective that was profit maximization because over here the onus is on the maximization of wealth 
of the stockholders also, of the shareholders, right? It considers the time value perspective, risk factors to be considered kiya jata hai, resources ka optimum utilization hota hai so that the, so that the wealth of all the stakeholders is maximized and then the economic interests of the society are taken care of when you are taking care of the shareholders, the stockholders, the employees of your concern. So objectives of FM and this has been the changing role of financial manager also. Earlier the financial managers were basically concerned with the maximization of profits of the concern but now they are concerned with the maximization of the value and wealth of the shareholders of all the stakeholders that are associated with the company so that should always be uh, prepared along with along with a small practical on risk and return this has been explained in enormous depth risk and return which is dealing with the equities who are traded in national stock exchange and bombay stock exchange where you have learned how to calculate the risk and return of the stocks and the shares the equity shares you know providing the maximum return and minimum risk are selected so risk and return prepare the practical portion of it that's you know very significant moving on to the next one you can have short notes on sources of finance now sources of finance could be from shares finance could always be you know uh, gathered from by floating equity shares or by issuing preference shares by issuing debentures another source of financing is lease financing term loans right debentures and term loans are also an important source of financing then from international markets you can issue adrs gdrs adr stands for american depository receipts and gdrs are global depository receipts so aapko dhyan rakhna hai and adr ek american depository receipt ownership ko show karti hai but of a non us company and it is traded in us markets so first of all remember adr are traded in us stock markets global depository receipts are those financial instruments in which the issuer can raise money in two or more markets right so he can always issue those receipts in european markets american markets but an adrs are exclusively traded in american stock exchange so adr represents ownership what does adr represent adr represents the ownership in the shares of a non us company and it is traded in us stock exchanges american stock exchanges while global depository receipts are those financial instruments in which the issuer raises money in two or more international markets right they could be traded in american markets they could be traded in european markets so simultaneously they are going to raise money in two or more international markets there are some salient features of adr also which you can always remember for adr american depository receipts you can always classify adrs into unsponsored programs sponsored adr programs restricted adrs which are traded in accordance with the section 144a they are issued and traded in accordance with the section 144a there are three types of adrs unrestricted adr programs restricted adr programs and those uh, American depository receipts which are traded uh, as per the section 144A. So, you have to keep these types of ADRs. And in ADRs, there are some features hai, which you must always remember. First of all, ADR is issued, in, issued through a US depository bank. 
अमेरिकन डिपॉजिटरी रिसिप्ट जो है वो यूएस डिपॉजिटरी बैंक के थ्रू इशू की जाती है राइट अनस्पॉन्सर्ड जो होती है दे आर इशूड बाय थर्ड पार्टी स्पॉन्सर्ड आर इशूड बाय अ डिपॉजिटरी बैंक एज वेल एज बाय द इन कॉम्बिनेशन विद द इशूइंग पार्टी एंड द अनरेस्ट्रिक्टेड आर इशूड एंड ट्रेडेड अकॉर्डिंग टू सेक्शन वन ए तो इसका क्लासिफिकेशन एडीआर का होता है अनस्पॉन्सर्ड एडीआर प्रोग्राम्स these are the three basic types of adrs then sponsored adr programs and then you have the third one which is restricted adr programs right so must remember all these three restricted unsponsored and sponsored adr programs <clears throat> unsponsored adr programs are issued by third party sponsored adrs are issued by the depository bank as well as the issuing party and restricted adr are treated according to section 144a so these are the three basic types of adrs now remember some of the points of adrs number 1 adrs kisi bhi american stock exchange mein list ho sakti hai that is their first characteristic adr can be listed in any american stock exchange right they can be listed in any american stock exchange number 2 जो भी एडीआर का होल्डर होता है एडीआर तो वो किसी भी टाइम पर शेयर्स के अंदर कन्वर्ट करवा सकता है सो द सेकेंड कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इज द होल्डर ऑफ एडीआर कैन गेट देम कन्वर्टेड इनटू शेयर्स राइट बट होल्डर एडीआर को शेयर्स में तो कन्वर्ट करवा सकता है लेकिन उसके पास कोई वोटिंग राइट्स नहीं होते सो यू मस्ट रिमेंबर दैट द होल्डर ऑफ एडीआर हैज नो वोटिंग राइट्स लाइक ऑल द अदर इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स ऑफ द कंपनी and in all the equity share holders of the company have got voting rights but the holder of adr doesn't have any voting rights right also jo dividend equity shares par milta hai usi tarah se dividend adrs ke upar bhi milta hai so the dividend on adrs dividend on adr is similar to dividend on equity shares so must remember dividend on adr is similar to dividend on equity shares jo adrs hain aapko ye bhi dhyan rakhna hai ki adrs jo hain wo us dollars ke denominations mein issue ki jaati hain so this is going to be the next characteristic that adr they are always in us dollars denominations and this is but obvious because they are traded in american stock exchange so the adrs are always on us dollars denomination uske baad aapko ek cheez aur dhyan rakhiye ek adr it can represent more than one share and adr can represent more than one share i mean it can also happen that that an adr might be equal to two equity shares to so, adr ka processing ke upar hai the adr can represent more than one share and adr might be equal to two shares also or an adr might be equal to three shares also so american depository receipts 
Remember, these are the salient features. They can be listed in any American stock exchanges. The holder of India can get them converted into shares. At, right, the holder of ADR has got no voting rights. All the, although the holder of the equity shares have got voting rights, but in this case, a disadvantage is the holder of ADR has got no voting rights. Although dividend on ADR is similar to dividend on equity shares, ADR is in US dollar denominations, and ADR can represent more than one share. Coming to classification of ADRs. There are these three classification of ADRs. They are unsponsored ADR programs which are initiated by the third party. Then sponsored ADR programs which are initiated in combination with the depository bank and the issuing party. And then there are restricted ADR programs which are placed, I mean which are issued and traded in accordance with a section and the section is 144A. उसके बाद मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन सोर्सेस ऑफ फाइनेंस एंड देन यू कैन ऑलवेज प्रिपेयर प्रैक्टिकल ऑन टाइम वैल्यू ऑफ मनी वेयर लेक्चर्स हैव बीन डिलीवर्ड टू यू एस फार एस डिस्काउंटिंग एंड कंपाउंडिंग साइमेंटेलिस्टी देयर वर सम अदर केसेस आल्सो ऑन एमोर्टाइजेशन Repayment of loan in equal installments. So practical on time value of money, where you have learned the concepts of discounting, compounding, and amortization. Next, number three is a practical, a very important practical on working capital, where the most important models are operating cycle method and net. Current assets method. So working capital. Remember, a firm always needs some money, some capital in order to carry out day-to-day -day transactions, routine operations. That amount is called as working capital, and that can be calculated by using operating cycle method, where we have learned various formulae how to calculate the value of operating cycle. Then with the help of operating cycle, you have learned how to calculate the value of working capital. Similarly, net current assets method, whereby we first of all calculate the current assets, the total of all the current assets. Then the total of all the current liabilities. Ultimately, current assets minus current liabilities gives the working capital. And if there is any provision for contingency, that has to be added. To get the value of net working capital, so the practical on working capital is very very important. It is a mandatory part in financial management and a very uh, significant one. Then you have cost of capital. Cost of capital. Remember, a firm always needs huge finance for its growth and expansion programs. फर्म को कैपिटल की जरूरत पड़ती है फॉर ग्रोथ एंड फॉर फर्दर एक्सपेंशन प्रोग्राम्स द टर्म कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल रेफर्स टू द मिनिमम रेट ऑफ रिटर्न अ फर्म मस्ट अर्न ऑन इट्स इन्वेस्टमेंट सो दैट द मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ द फर्म इज मेंटेन सो इट रेफर्स टू द मिनिमम रेट ऑफ रिटर्न अ फर्म मस्ट अर्न on its investment so that the market value of the firm is maintained cost of capital is generally the minimum rate of return expected by the investors it is calculated by considering all the facts like interest on debentures dividends on equity shares as well as preference shares flotation costs which refers to the cost of issue which are brokerages underwriting commissions then you got advertisement costs printing charges so a cost of capital takes care of all these parameters and it is ultimately the minimum rate of return which is expected by the investors and the minimum rate of return which a firm must earn by considering all these factors so that the market value of the firm is maintained and in that 
the weighted average cost of capital is very very significant because it takes care of all the cost of debt capital cost of preferred share capital cost of equity shares and cost of retained earnings so it is the combined cost of capital whereby it is calculated by considering all the cost of capitals and their various weights their proportions in the capital so it takes care of all the parameters all the various costs of capitals ad cost of debt capital ke cost of equity share capital kp cost of preference share capital kr cost of retained earnings and then they are equated with their weights weight stands for their proportions and ultimately the weighted average cost of capital is derived so the practical on cost of capital becomes very important and moving on to the next one another important concept that is leverage a leverage is further classified into operating leverage and financial leverage whereby operating leverage is calculated by the formula contribution upon ebit and financial leverage is calculated by ebit upon ebt then there are degree of operating leverage and degree of financial leverage then you can equate both ol and fl to get the value of combined leverages and dol and dufl when both these are multiplied they give degree of combined leverages and these degrees are calculated whenever there are two level of sales right so leverage are those financial instruments which measures a change in variable with respect to the change in another variable and these degrees are calculated whenever there are two level of sales so we have discussed the concept of leverage in enormous detail along with their practical portion operating leverage financial leverage combined leverage degree of operating leverage degree of financial leverage as well as degree of combined leverage and deriving their income statements right if you are provided with the values of operating leverage and financial leverage so derivation of income statement with the help of those leverages is also very important so must take care of all these aspects before you start your preparation for fm now after leverage you have a chapter called dividend policy now in dividend policy the theoretical aspects of dividend policy are quite important the factors which are which are to be considered while deciding the dividend policy as well as the practical on walters model and gordon model walters model and gordon model they proposed a kind of dividend policy and the dividend policy they proposed was related to various firms growth firm declining firm and a normal firm and you must remember whenever the rate is greater than cost of equity the rate of return of a company whenever it is greater than cost of equity that firm is called as growth firm right whenever the rate is greater than ke ke ka matlab hota hai cost of equity that firm is called as a growth firm or growth firm ke andar walters ne or dividend policy ye design kari thi that there should be a zero payout in dividends right because the company needs funds for further growth and expansion programs so there should be a zero payout in dividend you have discussed all these things in detail but it is just to give you a brief insight about the dividend policy if the rate is less than ke that means that is a declining firm and for decline declining firm there should be a 100% payout in dividends and if the rate is equal to ke that is going to be a normal firm and for a normal firm whether you are paying dividend or you are not paying any dividend the market price is going to be unaffected or unchanged so theory is very important the factors which are to be considered while deciding the dividend policy of a company and the practical on walters model 
as well as Gordon model and their recommendations about growth firm, growth firm who the agenda return greater than K say declining firm, all those firms having return less than K and normal firms then the return rate of return equal to that KE cost of equity sale dividend policy or mergers and acquisitions now we have discussed the concept of mergers and acquisitions in the class along with their practicals so either dividend policy or theory on theory as well as practical on mergers and acquisitions is important both have never been there simultaneously in the examinations so there is a choice between the two either you can get a practical or theory on dividend policy or a theoretical or practical in mergers and acquisitions we have discussed all the concepts of mergers and acquisitions in detail where you have calculated the swap ratios by using the formula for market price of a target firm and market price of an acquiring firm right you have calculated the eps of the company pre merger right and the eps of the firm after merger or after acquisition you have also calculated the gain or loss to the shareholders after acquisitions so mergers and acquisitions or dividend policy there is a choice between the two and then comes the heavy weight that is capital budgeting capital budgeting which is very important for investment decisions where you make use of payback period payback period denotes the time in which you can recover your investment the lesser the payback period the more beneficial it is for the project so payback period denotes karta hai wo time jisme aap apne investment ko recover kar sakte hain ye jitna kam hota hai utna hi beneficial hota hai <coughs> sorry and we have discussed all the various uh, types of paybacks payback period for even cash and flows payback for an even cash and flows and the variations in payback which were payback reciprocal post payback profitability so payback period arr average rate of return on both original as well as average investment npv and irr right discounted models taking care of time value perspective net present value jis bhi project ka net present value higher hota hai hamesha usi ko select kiya jata hai aur agar ek hi project ko to aap ye dekhte hain ki net present value positive aa raha hai ki jis bhi project ka npv positive hota hai us project ko select kar lete hain if the npv is negative the projects are rejected and if there are more than one projects agar wahan pe aapke paas do teen char panch project ho jiska bhi npv maximum hota hai उसको सेलेक्ट कर दें आई आर आर इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न भी जिसका मैक्सिमम होता है वो सेलेक्ट किया जाता है पे बैक इसके बारे में ध्यान रखना पे बैक शुड ऑलवेज बी मिनिमम वाई ए आर आर एन पी बी आई आर आर दी शुड ऑलवेज बी मैक्सिमम सिमिलरली डिस्काउंटेड पे बैक पीरियड जो वेरिएशन है पे बैक का वो भी हमेशा मिनिमम होना चाहिए मॉडिफाइड इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न यू लर्न दैट ऑल्सो सो देर आर वेरियस मॉडल्स अलॉन्ग विद प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी इंडेक्स पी आई और पीवी इंडेक्स तो ये मेजर मॉडल्स हैं जो आपको याद रखने हैं वाइल स्टडिंग कैपिटल बजटिंग पे बैक पीरियड ए आर आर एन पी वी आई आर आर पी वी इंडेक्स ऑन बोथ एस एल एम मॉडल स्ट्रेट लाइन मेथड एज वेल एज डब्ल्यू डी वी मॉडल रिटर्न डाउन वैल्यू मेथड के भी डेप्रीसिएशन निकाला है एस एल एम एंड डब्ल्यू डी वी सो यू मस्ट रिमेंबर द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ डेप्रीसिएशन by both ways straight line method as well as written down value so these are my personal favorites introduction of fm objectives of fm right which have got two theories profit maximization and wealth maximization practical of risk and return a short one sources of finance which are shares debentures lease financing adrs gdrs in international markets practical of time value of money which is basically involving discounting principles or compounding principles and then you got repayment of loans in equal installments then working capital cost of capital leverage dividend policies 
or mergers and acquisitions and the most important one which is capital budgeting which is based on payback period, NPV, IRR, profitability index and ARR.